The Old Charleston Jail, located in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, is a sight to see if you're ever in low country. Nestled between neighborhoods and on the outskirts of the posh historic district, the jail looks horrifyingly out of place. Across the street, an apartment building with children playing on the green has this large fortress for a view. In this area, the horrifying past of Charlestonians from long ago literally collides with residents of today. The area where the jail currently sits was once a four-acre parcel for public use in 1680. The jail itself operated from 1802 until 1939. When the jail was first constructed in 1802, it had four floors with a two-story octagonal tower. In 1855, Charleston Architects added an octagonal rear wing and expanded the main building, adding Romanesque revival details. A fireproof wing with individual cells was designed and added by Robert Mills in 1822. In 1886, the tower and top story were severely damaged by an earthquake, so they were removed. The Old City Jail housed some notorious figures in Charleston's history. It even kept Lavinia Fisher, which you may remember from episode 16. John and Lavinia Fisher were convicted of highway robbery and imprisoned in the jail from 1819 until 1820. Some of the high seas pirates were kept there in 1822 while they awaited their fate at the gallows. Denmark Vesey was kept here after he was accused of planning a slave riot. It is said that Denmark spent his last days in the tower before his hanging. Both Union and Confederate soldiers spent time in the jail also. Many African American men from the 54th Massachusetts Regiment ended up here after the assault on Fort Wagner in July of 1863. The jail was decommissioned in 1939. In 2000, the American College of the Building Arts acquired the building. They stabilized the structure and planned to use it as its campus and headquarters. By 2016, the college had moved from the jail and Old City Jail LLC purchased it. Tours have been available since 2003, and it's been visited by notable paranormal investigators, including Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, Ghost Brothers, and BuzzFeed Unsolved. My friend Whitney Zahar and I visited Charleston in August of 2020. We were both feeling a little bit of cabin fever at the time, so we planned a short weekend away, hoping we'd feel re-inspired after taking some history and ghost tours. And boy, were we inspired. Here's Whitney. I'm joined today by Whitney Zahar. She's a writer and co-host of the Para Unity podcast. Hello, Whitney. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. I really wanted to... We should have done this a long time ago because... I know, right? <laughs> because... <laughs> We have, we've had this epic trip in Charleston in August of 2020. So I kind cannot, of, bu- what in the heck possessed us? <laughs> I know. I know. I think we were both kind of feeling like, oh, let's just do something. Let's get out, you know? So we had a really wonderful time and we explored some new, new places. Um, one of the places that we got to go was the old Charleston jail. Oh, yes. <laughs> what an experience that was, right? I I still think about it. I sometimes still dream about it. It's, that building is incredible, first of all. Yes. How it's just there. And I know once upon a time that was perhaps the outskirts of Charleston. Mm-hmm. But now it's just surrounded by all these houses and all these ho- uh, housing developments. So it feels so incongruous out it does i remember when we were walking up to go to the tour we were a few minutes early Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and there was these children playing in like the green in front of the apartment building in front of it. Do you remember? Yes. Yes. And they were so happy just running around doing their own thing. And then right over there is like this monolith. Yeah. The building. It's terrifying oh. looking too. It's not, it is. It's not like a normal jail. It looks like a dungeon, like I, I don't castle like thing. I wouldn't want to be put in there. <laughs> no. That's for sure. And here's the crazy thing. We actually went there in the daytime before mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. tour, like a couple of hours before That's her right. tour. Yeah. Because we weren't sure of visiting hours and things sure. like that. So we just walked there. Yeah, and we got some good photos during the daylight too, which was sure important. <laughs> I remember vividly this one picture I took that has the, it was up close towards the windows and the bars on the windows. And then this branch, this vine, this tree or something like that, just jutting out of the stonework. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's just really weird. It is. It's a uh, very eerie place. I couldn't imagine living where that was my view. You know, I was thinking about the people around it and there are people who live all around it really. And it's just like, that's an odd view to have. I mean, I think it's kind of, um, I don't know. It's kind of terrifying to look at. Yeah. I, I mean, the only thing that kind of might be comparable to me are the people that work and live around Eastern state penitentiary in Philadelphia mm -hmm. and that too, once upon a time, was the outskirts of the city. And mm -hmm. then the city just sort of crept up and grew up around it. So, so let's backtrack just a little bit and talk okay. about why you wanted to visit Charleston. Well, a big part of it was I wanted to see you. Yeah. It was our first in person <laughs> meeting. It was, and we had a blast. Vanessa and I, so for everybody listening, Vanessa and I truly did meet through the podcast and I yep. first heard about her from Jennifer from Haunted Happenstance. Yes. You had done wonderful. Your, yeah. You had done this share the scare episode with yeah, her. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, I need to check this girl out. And then I just fell in love with you. So uh, we started talking and as I we listened, have so much in common, we have a lot in common. It's, yeah. it's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. <laughs> But yeah, um, I have actually, I had actually never been to Charleston before. Um, it just never came up. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so Vanessa's in, I think you had just moved to Savannah. Yeah, I had, I had just moved. Yeah. So, and I'm up in, around Richmond, Virginia, and it's the pandemic. Yep. <laughs> and we were both, I think we were both, okay, let's, we do want to get together but yeah. let's figure out a place where we can just sort of meet in the middle yeah. and make sure we're safe. And so we're just like, I think, yeah, let's just go for Charleston. Let's just go yeah. for that. And it was absolutely the best time. We, we stayed in so a wonderful time. little hotel downtown. And I think mm -hmm. what I would imagine we're probably about, what do you say, like a half mile to a mile from the old jail, somewhere around that ballpark? Yeah, about that. Maybe even a mile and a half if you're Maybe a mile and a half, okay. Yeah, yeah, and also remember, we're friends also with Mike Brown from right. Pleasing Terrors. Yep. And I was like, okay, I got to take his tour. So we also had arranged you to did take that a tour. too. That was and that a was crazy night. Fabulous. That was an amazing tour and a great yeah. experience. It was. was Mike is amazing. amazing. Yes. Yes, totally. Uh, okay. So, so getting back to the old jail. Okay. You had, I think I remember you having very strong uh, feelings right away, like as we were walking toward it or walking up to it. What were your initial thoughts? I felt, oh God, and you must, and wow, to your recollection, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is true. It has been a little bit. That's why I said we should have done this earlier, but that's okay. <laughs> it felt... I could imagine going up to there and feeling all hope just sort of drain out of my body mm -hmm. and also feeling like this, it's hard to describe, but I felt that Charleston definitely has a lot of primal 
elemental feeling about it because of its position, where it is in South Carolina, close to the water. Um, It's right there. It's so old. It's just Mm -hmm. so old. And I know that there's been a lot of earth history around South Carolina, too. There was an earthquake in Charleston once upon a time, the hurricanes, um, and then also the history of the location of the old city jail. It used to be where the armory was kept, I think, and the gunpowder magazine. It exploded and killed about maybe 100 people at one point. So it was just like this. I felt like I was sucked dry. I Mm -hmm. really did. But I wanted to see what it is. I I wanted to see it through because it's like, when am I going to get another opportunity to actually come to this location? Mm -hmm. Because nobody really knows what its ultimate fate is going Mm -hmm. to be. We were lucky that we were able to get in for a tour. Yeah. I mean, I think it's temporarily closed right now as we are recording this. Um, It's, it is, it is like that though, where you don't know if, if there's going to be continued tours throughout, you know, the years or not. But Mm -hmm. one of the things that was, I would say setting the scene for this tour was that it was very, it had been stormy the whole trip. (laughs) And And every time, every time we went out, I forgot my umbrella. Yeah, it was wild. And yeah, so we did a lot of walking in the rain. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, so when we got there, though, it wasn't raining, but it was definitely gray and dark and moody, had a moody vibe. And um, mind you, since we are talking about traveling in the pandemic, we had, we wore masks throughout our time there. And you mentioned um, (laughs) before we started recording about the horrible humidity. And we were talking about August in low country. So it was pretty miserable. (laughs) Like I said, I don't know what I was thinking. (laughs) But you know what? It was like, hey, let's just do this. Let's just do this. And I got to admit, even when we went and saw the jail during the daytime and we actually walked around the periphery Mm -hmm. of the building, we had gotten inside the gate Mm -hmm. and we walked around the perimeter of the building. I, it was before we saw any tour guide to come out and actually, you know, tell us what we needed to do. I heard a noise Mm. Do, do you remember this? I, I heard a knocking. I remember us getting a little spooked and ended up leaving kind of like in a rush after that. I mean, I know, yes. I, yeah, there's so much, there's so much going on in that space that it does. I mean, people have had sightings outside of there. People have seen things inside when they're standing outside, have heard things like you. It's, it's a lot. There's a lot going on there. I mean, there was part of my, there was a part of me that were th- that was saying, okay, was that like a branch tapping or was that like a, was somebody actually right there at one of those windows just sort of tapping on it? Mm-hmm. But I honestly didn't see a soul mm-hmm. except for you and me. Mm-hmm. And those windows looked pretty dark and pretty thick. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, I don't know. But I was like, we were just standing there just sort of being like, um, do we need to, should we go up to the door or something? Knock on the door. And just before we were thinking about doing that, I hear just this knocking sound. I'm like, what? Mm. I, I, I'm like, okay, this is, this is interesting. And then we booked our, we, he -hmm. told us what to do. We booked the tour and we came back like. Alice's. Later that night. Yeah. And before that, we had had, didn't we have dinner before that? We were at Pooh's I think so. Porch. Oh, that yeah. That's right. a cute little place. Oh, we loved it. Yeah. There's a whole ghost story that surrounds that, too. That's for another episode. But That's another time. <laughs> Let's go back to the jail. And funny enough, Vanessa, um, I would have actually been, I sort of go back and binge everybody's podcast that I uh-huh. have. And I'm actually on the episode about Lavinia Fisher. Okay, so that's yeah. a good lead in to the inside once we make our way inside the old jail. Oh boy, that <laughs> it was so weird. It I was. mean, first off, it didn't feel any 
cooler in there. No, <laughs> not even a little bit. Not, not by, not by a long shot. And I was, mm-hmm. how many people were in there with us? Like what, 15? Maybe so. Yeah. And it's so dark like that, that, so this, that was my second time visiting there and okay. it's incredible how horribly dark it is in that space. And like you said, there's no wind, there's no, like, there's no relief for the heat. Um, and then just the, the amount of darkness that you're experiencing. And it's not like, I think what, what our guide had a flashlight or yeah, there's I mean, a couple he, of strategic lights maybe throughout, but it was low light. It was very yeah. dark in there. I mean, first off, let's credit the tour company, uh, yes. Bulldog Tours. Yes, who, they were wonderful. Yes, this this gentleman, and I, God help me, I can't remember his name, but he was a nice young man, and he was very knowledgeable, and I felt very respectful. He wasn't yeah. a sensationalist tour guide, right. which, you know, having been on a lot of ghost tours and having done ghost tours myself, mm-hmm. there is a tendency to get more into the spook than it is into the actual story mm-hmm. and the actual history. So I really do appreciate this gentleman for actually towing that line very nicely. Mm-hmm. And honestly, he didn't need to go. I mean, going overboard was not needed because the site alone. I think your first stop in that building in the jail was this large room where there was this crane or something that people were holding on to and it was supposed to replicate the kind of punishment that sometimes the people in the jail would have inflicted upon them and it mm-hmm. this this crane this harness almost that they would hold on to and that it would be pulled up so they'd be stretched out and then they'd be whipped Mm -hmm. or however many lashes that they'd get i mean i've heard of this before but i mean we're seeing it Mm -hmm. and it was right around that moment that i had the most uncomfortable thing that's ever happened to me on any tour and it had just begun i felt my energy literally sucked out of me Mm -hmm. and i felt like the whole From that point on, I was walking around the jail, bent over, like I was a little old lady with a cane, and I felt like my feet were in were in wet cement that I was like lifting up and just sort of. No, it's hard for you to walk. Yeah, it was very hard for me to walk, and I felt old. Yeah, and. I remember like, wondering, like, because I could see that, that you weren't feeling well and or like definitely not it wasn't feeling normal. And um, but you wanted to proceed. So we did finish the tour. We did. But, but you this whole time had this feeling of this presence on you. Is that right? I felt. Fa- yeah, I don't know what it is. Even to this day, I still don't know what it is. I don't know if it was part humidity, part just being in this stifling environment mm-hmm. which you, now we can relate to what mm-hmm. these poor prisoners had to go through mm-hmm. stifling environment humidity and also just this essence of just i'm gonna suck you dry and mm-hmm. i'm just like oh my god i i was literally just i i mean i managed to keep up with everybody and I wasn't feeling horrible otherwise, but I was, which told me, okay, I can probably still proceed with this. I'll figure it out if it gets too bad. But I was just so doubled over. I mean, Mm -hmm. it felt like I was carrying a burden. Mm -hmm. And it was the most bizarre thing. But I'll tell you what else was bizarre. Um, we were in a room, I want to say it was the room on the th- third floor. Uh, my geography of this building, that's oh, another mine's thing. Mine's terrible too because it feels disorienting. And I don't know if yeah. it's because it was dark or because it's there, the layout of the place or the the way that we did the tour. I don't know, but I've been in it twice and I still can't make heads or tails of like what rooms I was in. Yeah, but, I, can't, I can't even yeah. tell you either. I was, I mean, and you've been in there before. Mm-hmm. 
So if you can't figure it out, then <laughs> I definitely was lost. Mm -hmm. I, but I know we had gone up the stairs and I know that it was probably maybe three floors, second floor, something like that. It was a huge space and there were no cages in there. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got the feeling as we were all just sort of standing in a circle in the room or like a ragged oval or something like that. All of us was there. And the tour guide, of course, was walking around and just telling his information, his story and everything. And I'm kind of leaning against the wall a little bit or I was towards the back just to mm -hmm. kind of get a little bit of relief because Again, I was doubled over. I, mm -hmm. I can't I, I don't even know how I managed to keep my balance in there. I saw <laughs> behind every single one of us, it was like here we all were as a circle, as an oval, and then right behind us was another circle, an oval, mm. shadow figures, all standing behind. And they weren't doing anything. They were just there, but I felt that these were these were the past mm -hmm. and they were there and they stood around us just sort of watching I, when, I got yeah when I was there the first time I don't know if I shared this with you before or not but when I was there the first time it was with my husband and we we did the tour it was late at night um, we were only in Charleston one night and I was like, Oh, somewhere spooky. Let's go. <laughs> so we did the tour and you, there was a room and I believe it was the room. It had the cages in it and mm -hmm. it was the room. I believe that they shared the story of Lavinia Fisher. Yes. I remember um, that. And at this, in this, I don't remember if they did it the, the time that you and I went or if it was just when we were there, but he turned the lights off completely and we were in the room completely black. Like it was, I could not see a hand in front of me and something touched my arm. Like I had, like I was holding my husband's hand, but on my other arm, it touched almost like squeezed the back of my bicep. Oh, and, goodness. and I screamed like, and you know, where I, it was an echo, like horrible. And then other people started freaking out. Cause you know, that's how that goes. Yeah. It's a contagious event, you know? <laughs> And so I was like, something touched me and there was nobody around me, like close enough to me, but it terrified me. And when I walked out of there, I just thought there are things there that are not, they don't play friendly. <laughs> I think there's some, some, I don't know. I don't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say evil because I'm not sure about that, but there is definitely some darkness to what extent I'm not sure. Yeah. Did you get that I... vibe? Yeah, I did. And a lot of it does have to do with the kinds of individuals that were placed in that place. Mm -hmm. People who truly did wrong and hurt other people. So, I mean, some of these people are not good people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it wasn't, it also wasn't that sense of evil. It was the darkness was also the sense of heaviness and despair yes. yeah. because I mean, for a lot of these people, there was no way out. I mean, a jail at the time, I mean, I don't know about when it changed, but I do know that in the, in the 18th century, jails were just meant to be holding places mm -hmm. for your trial and then you'd be taken back to the jail to await your punishment, whether that was whatever that may be. Most of the time it was hanging if you had been convicted of a felony. At least that's how it was in the Virginia courts, probably similar in South Carolina too. Yeah. But um, I mean, British court of law. So if I think you can imagine this absolute this is the end of the road. Mm -hmm. I'm here because Despair. I'm going to face trial and then I'm going to be here waiting for my death. Mm -hmm. And I think about how many prayers might have gone up in that place. I also think about who may be innocent parties mm -hmm. who were kept there 
Um, I think about, I mean, it makes, I mean, it makes me think of our own current prison system and Mm -hmm. how, look at how we've built this system of incarceration when really we should think about a system of healing and atonement, but that's for another, that's for another (laughs) day, but it just was, I mean, it, I think part of the reason I was just doubled over was just feeling all that and it was a physical reaction on my body and then seeing all these shadows around us and these these shadows they kind of reminded me of the of like little cutout figures that you that a child would do there was no nothing distinguishing about any of them I couldn't tell if they were male and or female Mm -hmm. they were just there and I've seen that at one other location and it's a place you've talked about too. St. Albans Sanatorium. Yeah. The only other place. So, needless to say, I was very I loved the tour and everything, mm-hmm. but I'm very glad when we got out of there. I know. I remember the walk home. So, we were physically running back yes! to the hotel. But I think it was for two reasons. One, it was flooding, like yes. cats and dogs flooding. We were not prepared. We didn't have umbrellas. I was in sandals, I remember. And I was, you were. <laughs> and you were in were freaking so. flip-flops. <laughs> and then, and then um, also, I remember it being such an impactful experience for you that you could not wait to get away from it. I couldn't wait. I, I, I couldn't wait. There, I like to think of myself as pretty brave when it comes to touring a haunted location, but I think I had reached my limit and yeah. I was like, okay, we're out of here. Yeah. And I was trying very hard to be cool and yeah. polite and all that stuff. But as soon as, and it's so funny, you mentioned the, how it was just downpouring like yes. sheets on yes. us. The rain started the moment we yep. stepped outside and it was boom, thunder, yep. and then whoosh, rain dropping down. It was incredible it and definitely all sudden, the cherry on this spooky cake <laughs> yeah <laughs> of and, an evening <laughs> and it was funny because all of a sudden I was walking upright again yeah yeah as soon as you got out of there you were like, you were relieved I grabbed your hand and we're like yeah. we're out of here yeah yeah so now that two years has gone by oh, would you geez. go back what do you think I I think I would walk over there, yes, because I do want to see what's going on with it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a it's a piece of history. Mm-hmm. And I also am fascinated with some of the more recent history in which different preservation groups and schools are trying we're trying to work on saving parts of it Mm -hmm. and preserving parts of it I would be interested in knowing if anything if anything like that is going on but I do believe there is there is some work being done on it right now but I will look into that and and definitely leave some links to to the tour um the the episode on St. Albans and the episode on Lavinia Fisher, who was Definitely. a prisoner in that jail. Um, yeah, it was, a, I, I think it's one of the more fascinating places I've toured. I think the second time I had mentally prepared myself you were a little a better. Worse. Yeah, you were solid. <laughs> and I was, and because we were had just basically met each other in person, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we talked, we mm-hmm. texted, we wrote each other. We did mm-hmm. all sorts of things together. And we were also starting a writing project together. Right. Which I'm still holding on to, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, so yes. Yes. But um, we didn't know each other. So I didn't want you to think that I was this whacked out person from Virginia who was one of your biggest fans and also we're here we're hanging out and 
the last thing I wanted to do was be like, oh God, now she's going to think I'm absolutely nuts because no. I'm walking around like doubled over for no reason. No. no, I'm so grateful that I have found a community of people who have had experiences like I have. You know, yes. I don't often talk about it and I, I don't know that I've ever really talked about it on the podcast before, but growing up in a house when you're a child that had things that were unexplainable happen. I feel like as an adult, you're trying to make sense of that. Mm. Uh, At least that's my, you know, my interest in the paranormal is because I'm trying to make sense of all the things that happened to me or happen or I experienced as a child. And to know that so many other people have experienced that and to walk along with people and go to these places and know that I'm not the only one who's screaming in the corner because something touched me, you know, <laughs> there are other people who are very sensitive to this as well. And you definitely are. And we've had other experiences since, you know, oh, <laughs> and God, I'm sure we'll yeah. have a lot more. Yes, <laughs> we'll have to do a yes. whole other episode on the, on your Savannah trip from last year when you came here uh, and we kind of explored some here too. Savannah has my heart. It yeah. truly, I will, I will say that I'll go on record. I've been to many cities all over the world and I love just about every single one. They're all special to me. Savannah got me in a mm. way that nowhere else has. And it's not just because you're there, although that's a big, big important <laughs> part of it. But Savannah is something that just, reached out to me, gracefully welcomed me into her heart. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's how I felt. I feel like she welcomed me and not, oh, I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. I feel like the city was welcoming me. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I I can't wait to go back and we've got a lot more adventures. I know that. Maybe one day you can get me back in the Sorrel Weed House. I don't know. Hey, you got me into the jail. I guess this is true. (laughs) Because I kind of want to see what's, I I kind of want, from a historical perspective, as a museum person Mm -hmm. and a preservationist, I kind of want to see what they did with that place. Yeah, yeah. It is a beautiful place. I do want to see what they did with it. But um, being mindful of your previous experiences, so... (laughs) You are the strong one for me in the jail. Yeah, so you may have to be the strong one for me. There. I will be the strong one for you in the Sorrel Weed House. <laughs> we'll, we'll go for that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing this experience that we had together and the creepy things that we, we experienced there in Charleston. But tell people where they can find you online. Okay, wow. <laughs> so, you can, so yes, you can find me on Facebook. Uh Whitney Zahar, uh, Z is a zebra, A-H-A-R. Most people don't realize that. Um, and you can also find me on Instagram, uh, Whitney Zahar, all one word. And you can also come in, listen to not just my adventures, but also the adventures of people all across the United States and hopefully around the world on my podcast, the Para Unity podcast. So yes. that's fun. And also books. <laughs> yes. And you had one recently, a story in an anthology that recently came out. Yes. And I'm so proud of this anthology. And I know Vanessa has snuck read it a little bit. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, it is. It was released on just this past, uh, on October 15th. It is called Autumn Tales. It's, here's the tagline, 10 Creepy Tales 10 amazing authors and one fantastic cause because all royalties from Amazon sales go to benefit Collective Liberty, which is an organization that's fighting against human and child uh, trafficking. So that's wonderful. It's an amazing cause. And it's also some creepy good stories to boot with some very, very talented authors. And I'm privileged to have been invited to join them so yeah check out Whitney is is an amazing writer by oh, the way so she's indeed. definitely one of my favorites so ah, but hearts. thanks again hearts Thank hearts you. <laughs> thanks for having me Vanessa and also guys listen to the fabled podcast <laughs>